Everybody. Um, my name is Farah. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about an art exhibit I saw recently in New York at the Guggenheim back in October. Um, so the artist is an abstract painter and writer named Atoradnan. She's someone whose talents I've always really admired, so I was very excited to see this solo show. Um, and she actually uh, very recently um, passed away um, this past month, um, sadly. So. I thought it would be a good idea for this presentation to touch upon just one aspect of her legacy, which is her painting career, uh, for those who might not be familiar with her work. This slide just gives some quick facts about her life and her career. Her mother was Greek and her father was a Syrian Ottoman officer. And when the empire collapsed, her parents went to Beirut and she was raised in a Greek and Turkish speaking household in Lebanon. Um, and she then studied philosophy at the University of Paris, um, and she did graduate work at UC Berkeley. Um, she was a lecturer at various universities. Um, but in addition to being an academic, she also wrote fiction and poetry. She has a very famous, somewhat experimental novel called Sip Marie Rose, um, which was published originally in French, and that, that was the language she's most comfortable writing in. Um, and she stopped writing in French in solidarity with the Algerians' fight for independence from um, French colonization. So this kind of led her to start painting without any kind of formal training. And we'll see here what kinds of things inspired her visually. So as I said, um, Atta Adnan was an abstract painter. She didn't have any aspirations toward photorealism in her painting. And because of her lack of training, she felt very free to break all sorts of conventions um, that you might be taught in formal instruction. So she really used this time of visual expression. Um, she started to engage with, she called it painting in Arabic. Um, and she started to explore the ways of Arab artists for the first time. She started to travel to different Arab speaking countries and draw inspiration from Arabic calligraphy, um, combining painting and writing in that way. But she is um, a lot more famous for her landscapes. Um, so you can start to see how Esau Adnan was impacted by the loss of home, the loss of place, um, the loss of heritage and history through destruction and exile. She thought a lot about the birthplace of her mother, which she never got to see, um, and the things that were lost when it burned down, like the nature, the buildings, the artifacts. And she really relied on the oral transmission of her family history from her grandfather and her mother um, to herself. And so these paintings kind of act as a way of visualizing the places that live in her heart, and that's what she calls inner landscapes. Um, so the inner landscape idea is, it may be why her paintings give a feeling of hope in their simplicity and the bright colors, um, even when she's painting places that are associated with loss or violence, um, she brings them back to life in a way that makes them kind of her home. Um, so if you view any of her paintings online or in a gallery, you'll notice that many of them are untitled, so you can attribute them to your own inner landscape if they speak to you. They can be, you know, representing anywhere. Um, but you could also notice that many of them look like variations of the same thing. Um, so at the Guggenheim, there were many paintings that were dedicated to Mount um, Tamalpais in Northern California. So she had a view of this mountain from her window while she lived there. And because she paints what she sees and what she feels and what she remembers all at once, every painting of this mountain is very different and it experiments with form or structure or color in some new way. So if you get a chance to see her work in person, I definitely recommend it. Um, I've listed some museums around the world that are currently showing her work. Um, and I've also listed um, some online galleries and 3D tours of past exhibits that you can see virtually. Um, and there's some selections of her books and her poetry if you're interested in that. Coincidentally, there's a, a documentary about her discussing her family history and um, that feeling of loss she had for Ismer, um, where her mother was born and how she never got to see it and how it kind of lives in her memory and how she paints it 
from what she believes she knows about it through that that oral transmission of history. So it's a really interesting documentary. Um, it's available for free. It has been available for free on eFlux, but today's actually the last day to see it. So if you have 45 minutes today, um, I'd say it's definitely worth a watch. These are the sources for the text I used on the slides. And that's me. Uh, so sorry about the technical issues, but thank you for your attention.